June 2012, the world's number one travel destination was Rio de Janeiro, not just for its breathtaking views, but to develop solutions to the environmental, economic, and social challenges that impact the future of our planet. Together we have the power to make a difference. Together we can change the world. Answering the call were more than 40,000 delegates, including nearly 100 world leaders from the developed and developing nations participating in the United Nations Rio Plus 20 Conference on Sustainable Development. Her Excellency Juma Rousseff, Brazil's president and president of the Rio Plus 20 Conference, set the tone for the three-day gathering. Estamos reunidos no Rio de Janeiro para dar passos audaciosos para mostrar para assumir responsabilidades. Estamos aqui porque o mundo do demanda mudanças. The agenda to face the challenges of climate change, the threat of environmental degradation, create green economies, boost economic growth, create jobs, and make sustainable development a reality for 7 billion people today and future generations to come. This is a historic day a major step towards the future we want. Africa, whose enormous dependence on biological resources, placing it at the greatest risk, was well represented at the conference. Speaking on behalf of His Excellency Paul Bia of Cameroon was the Minister of External Relations of Cameroon, His Excellency Pierre Mukoko Mbanjo. Si nous voulons laisser un monde vivable aux générations futures, Les défis de la pauvreté et de la destruction de l'environnement à l'échelle mondiale doivent être relevés immédiatement. L'économie verte me semble la solution la plus viable et la plus efficace pour assurer un développement permettant à la fois de satisfaire les besoins des populations et de préserver l'environnement sans compromettre l'avenir des générations futures. In concert with President Bia's gallant vision, African leaders at the highest level deliberated before and during the conference on an agenda that the African Development Bank President, Donald Kabaruka, dubbed as Africa Green and Thriving. The green economy is not something which we do because the, the international community is asking us to do it. It is good for, for Africa because we are closely linked to nature in terms of livelihood, be it rivers, agriculture, forests, and so on. And the African continent has least capabilities to handle natural disasters. Just look when you have floods in Mozambique uh, or drought in the Horn or in the Sahel. So pursuing a green path for us is a matter of uh, good common sense. In the wake of the 1992 United Nations Conference on Environment and Development also held in Rio, the Republic of Cameroon took early measures towards sustainable development in the Central Africa region, including its support of the development of an international research and training center. Located on the outskirts of Yaoundé, the center is spearheaded by Dr. Kevin Najabo of the Center for Tropical Research in the U.S., a division of UCLA's Institute of the Environment. We look at three main aspects in our research that is critical for the conservation of biodiversity in this region. So we look at food security, we look at health, and we look at climate change. The first aspect in working in any environment is, look, is to look at the political stability of the region. Cameroon is one of the most politically stable countries in Africa today. It is really the hinge between West and Central Africa. So most of the things you find in West, you find in Central Africa, you find in Cameroon. And in, in other jargons, we also say Cameroon is Africa in miniature. You can get all the different aspects of um, uh, diversity, of biodiversity within the country. The other aspect is the educational system. The government has been really supportive in creating a lot of universities where the youth can be trained. And so there is, there is this commitment of the government, what the government now calls a Vision 2035, where they're trying to make sure about 30% of the natural areas are the service protected areas. So the, the government is really committed in doing all of these. And when we go to the government and we see this commitment and we see how most of the Cameroonians themselves really want to engage in these processes, 
then it really serves as an example, as, as an example of different African countries which can follow. After the Amazon Basin, the Congo Basin is the biggest expanse of tropical forest anywhere in the world. Of greatest concern to Dr. Najabo and his team of researchers on the ground in Cameroon is Africa's Congo Basin rainforest, hosted by Cameroon and its five neighboring countries. The Congo Basin is particularly important for climate change because it's an area in Africa that's expected to see a huge uh, change in, in average temperatures and precipitation values uh, with, with uh, future climate change. Another reason to look at the Congo Basin for diseases is historically this has been a place where in fact wildlife infectious diseases have made the cross or bridge the gap between wildlife hosts and human hosts. So we are focusing on how to preserve and how to maintain this rich biodiversity for the good of mankind. Through their efforts on the ground in Cameroon, the IRTC team have made major advances, including identifying and preventing the spread of diseases linked to the environment, such as the H1N1 swine flu virus, cholera, malaria, and influenza. Comparable trends are found in the Amazon rainforest, one of many similarities between Cameroon and the Rio Plus 20 country, Brazil. Cameroon ambassador to Brazil, Martin Mbang, explains. Most Cameroonians and Brazilians would say we are only separated by the lake, by the ocean. You know, if you look at uh, the uh, chair of the jigsaw puzzle, Brazil and Africa fits at some point. So it is assumed that uh, the, the land, the two land masses at some point, you know, were together before tectonic movements drifted them apart. And that's why you have the same kind of products, the same kind of geography, geographical features in Africa, the coastal area in Africa, and the same in Brazil. So most of the things that we produce, like cocoa, coffee, cotton, Brazil also produces. And Brazil is way advanced in terms of agricultural research, and which we think can also benefit, can add value to our endeavors. With agriculture high on its agenda, Cameroon's President Paul Bia played host to Brazil's former president, Lula da Silva, in 2005. And in 2010, President Lula welcomed President Bia to Brazil. It was the first ever visit of a Cameroon head of state to South America, and Brazil in particular, in 50 years. Those two milestones, I will tell you, have produced long-standing effects. I'll give you one example. Between 2002 to 2011, because of you know, the exchanges between our two countries, in various sectors of activity, trade has increased more than five times. The historic visits reflected not just a political commitment and diplomatic engagement for the two nations, but served as an effective model for other African nations to establish relations with Brazil. But I also want to try to learn from Brazil. This country has done wonders in terms of uh, safety nets. I think it is a model for the world in how you, you craft subsidies uh, for the poor, whether they are production subsidies, consumption subsidies, but without undermining public finances and make sure that the poor actually benefit. Sustainable development requires investment. We have to make sure the population can feed themselves, they can, they can be able to cure themselves in, in case of diseases, and they can be able to have potable water. So we should be focusing on areas like that. For its part, Cameroon reaches out to the private sector for investment in infrastructure, transportation, power, and energy to further the efforts of researchers, like those at the Center of Tropical Research, who are looking for evidence-based solutions for the development challenges in the region to support the UN's and the world's commitment towards sustainable development. Some document we have just adopted by consensus provides critical guidance on the way forward. I commend you, Excellencies, for your wisdom, flexibility, and sense of duty. Rio Plus 20 has given us a solid platform to build on, and it has given us the tools to build with. The work starts now. I count on your leadership and strong commitment 
Thank you. Muito obrigado. Thank you very much.